But the guy on the other side with that all that experience, Coach Shermer, has been getting some praise from Shadur Sanders in a way. And Shadur also shared some insight on the offense from last year as um, he was on an interview during Super Bowl week, of course, a uh, media day, I guess, with uh, DNVR in an exclusive interview where he said, uh, let me see if I can quote it right here. He said, I don't need to, I don't need this to be a dig or a post route. You get what I'm saying? Because then I'm wondering if I'm seeing it right. What type of ball is it going to be? Is it too many? It's too many variables. I don't like having all the all those all them variables. I like this in in you know basically he's saying reading these comments and listening to him. I wish I had it queued up so he could speak for himself. But he basically said that last year's offense was a lot of option routes. And me coming from I played the slot in the tight end. You run a lot of option routes. It's it's pro, it's not easy to cover from a defensive standpoint, but also from an offensive standpoint, you have to be on the same page as your quarterback. And if you're not, if there's any type of hitch hesitation in there, that timing can be off. That can lead to a sack interception, incomplete pass or whatever. He would rather it be a definite offense and let his, let himself trust his eyes and what he sees and read the defense from what it is and not have to depend on the wide receiver to be on the same page as him. How do you feel about Shadur Sanders' comments and what he said to DNVR? Um, I, like I said, I think he's right on. I think it's going to help this offense. And uh, you got to trust Shadur Sanders more than trying to make him fit into a system. What do you feel, Adam? Well, first off, shout out to the DNVR guys because they did a great job out in Vegas. They, they had some good interviews. And the Shadur Sanders interview, uh, I really enjoyed because – after Colorado made the change in offensive play callers last season, I got asked to do a lot of radio interviews afterwards. So I was digging and I was reaching out to every source that I had. And what kept coming back to me was pretty simple. It was, it just did not mesh with Shadour and Sean Lewis. And, and they had different philosophies in terms of uh, the offense that they wanted to run. And uh, I didn't know the specifics until Shadour kind of talked about the choice routes in, in, it's not to say that that can't be extremely successful at the college level because um, you can gain an advantage from the defense if you have players that are executing it properly. But you look at Sean Lewis, his first his record his first year at Kent State was two and ten. I think it takes time to build continuity if you're going to give receivers options with the route that they're going to run. And once you have that system in place, you have the older receivers, the older tight ends that are teaching the younger guys about it. And there's this extension of the coaching staff that is getting it right. It's tough. And it makes sense now when you think back. You now, certainly there were times where Shadur uh, had no time in the pocket at all. You, you think back to the UCLA game, he wasn't even getting to his first option. It really probably in certain games didn't really matter the, the choice routes or not. He probably wasn't going to get even to that. Uh, first option, even if he knew um, with 100% certainty the route that receiver was 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 running because it was rough sledding with that old line at times. But in some of those circumstances, there did seem to be a, a slight hesitation with Shador where he's kind of trying to figure things out. And uh, only he can tell you the percentage of times that that actually w was an issue. But he mentioned in that interview that sometimes it was, a, you know, half a second that that you have to then figure out. And Half a second in football terms in the pocket when you got three hundred pounders running at you. That's yeah. a long. That that's uh, you know that that's that's too much time to be thinking. Uh, so it and it was hard to tell specifically what Pat Shermer did differently because you can't implement a whole new offense with four games left in the schedule. But mm -hmm. there just seemed to be a, a touch more comfortability with Shadour in those four games and. Uh, in, until he got knocked out, obviously, uh, in the Washington State game. Um, and by that point, I mean, the, the, the O-line had just completely lost confidence in Colorado. There there wasn't a, a path for Pat Shermer to, to be successful as a play caller in November, I don't think. Uh, but there, there were a few moments in there where you go, okay, I, I saw a little bit difference in terms of less hesitation. And so Shador Sanders coming out and kind of explaining that, uh, I'm glad he did that because it, it gives all of us a little bit more insight into what was going on. We know that Sean Lewis is a good coach. He's probably going to go to San Diego state and do really well, but there San Diego, California pipeline, you're going to recruit more high school. 
you want to have choice routes for you, for your, you know, personnel on offense and you develop that over time, it's probably going to be pretty successful. But when you're a program that is bringing in guys from the transfer portal and, and has a pro quarterback behind center, that's not the system. That's not the, the philosophy you probably want to have as an offense. Exactly right. That's why you want to bring in that pro style uh, offensive coordinator and run it like a pro style. He had success with um, shoot, Sam Bradford, uh, Donovan McNabb, and a few other quarterbacks. When he had good quarterbacks, he were he was able to be successful. Uh, that's Coach Pat Shermer. I think Shadur Sanders will be in a situation this year where he can use that anticipation like a pro quarterback and throw guys open based off of what he's seeing pre-snap. Uh, I think that goes right along with what he was saying uh, in this quote right here where he said, there were a lot of times last year we had choice routes to where it messed it, messed it up. I can't anticipate anything. So now I have second holding it, <clears throat> excuse me, holding it longer, but I never blamed anything on the lineman because there was always something I could have done better. You know, he's putting some blame on himself also for holding the ball or, you know, maybe not trusting the receiver or whatever. But all in all, that goes back to the system. If that's not a part of the system, if that's not what we're dependent on, um, and we're more dependent on him, like he said, put it on him and let him make the mistakes, you know, rather than, you know, this receiver coming in, that receiver now, are they prepared as much as Shadur is? Are they on the same page? Are we seeing the same thing pre-snap and after the snap? You know, they could show cover two, but then roll to one. That's going to change that, that, that route up from a seam route to a dig route, from a dig to a seam, from a post to a seven route. It could change up based off the coverage that you see. But if we're in a, a different system where it's more definite and we know that uh, based off the coverage, it's not going to be a go route anymore. It's going to be a hitch now. Not not a hitch or, or a slant or a curl. It's going to be a hitch or a go. We know on the inside, based off this coverage, it's going to be – it's more – it's just going to be a more uh, uh, confident and sure about himself offense that we'll see uh, Shadur Sanders uh, uh, and, and Coach Pat Sherman field this year, I think, out on the field for the Buffs. So I, I do yeah. think that I think a lot of, lot of um, notes from what we saw in the Super Bowl from the Chiefs <laughs> offense and the 49ers offense, just switching things up side to side, jet sweeps and here and there, and just keeping the defense on their heels. Andy Reid is a wizard, isn't he? Uh, some of those play calls. It, it, it just knowing in part of being a, an excellent play caller is just not knowing how to exploit defense, but it's also knowing the timing of things. And uh, he, he's he's pretty incredible there. Uh, one more thing with Pat Shermer that I'd throw in there, if you're looking for some optimism with him as a play caller, look at what Ryan Staub did against Utah. Yeah, it wasn't uh, – his numbers didn't jump off the box score, but – he played pretty solid football, and that was Pat Shermer getting this true freshman quarterback ready on short notice against a really good team in a tough road environment. It was pretty darn cold out there at Utah that day, and I thought he played pretty well. So I was encouraged with Pat Shermer, kind of his development skills by seeing him putting Ryan Staub in a position to, to have the, the, the ability to have success in that game. Now, they didn't win the game, but – you know, and I, I don't want to say the guys were checked out at that point, but it was rough slating down the stretch. I, I, I think, I don't know. I, I can't speak for everybody. I, I know as a media member, I was ready for that season to end just because it was tough watching that old line play down, you know, especially down the stretch. And it was, it was like, let's get to the off season. Let's get to the part where they bring in better players, which of course happened. And, and, but that, that seeing what Ryan Staub did against Utah was like, okay, Pat Shermer, I, I see you. Right, right. And and shouts out to the um, new guys on their offensive line who's come in from Khalil Benson to Jordan Seaton to Mayers to uh, Ja'Kiri Walker to big Tyler Johnson. All of the guys. Cash Cleveland. Shout out to them.